Every pitch in the history of baseball has something in common. At every level, in every country, in every Seth MacFarlane show. Whether or not it was a ball, a strike, a swing and miss, clobbered 500 feet, or fired into the first base stands. Wait, what? They all share one thing. They were thrown. The pitcher threw the ball out of their hand. I knew that. You knew that. Lego Luke Skywalker knew that. When you think about pitching, you automatically assume throwing a baseball is involved. That's what you visualize in your head. It's completely natural. That's all you know. The pitchers even throw in video games where they don't even have fingers. But what if I told you that there was an insane baseball loophole where you can technically pitch without, well, throwing? So you can officially pitch without pitching. I promise I'll make that make sense. But really quick, if you enjoy what you see here today, go drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more. It really does help out, and I promise I'm not just saying that. And also, we're blessed enough to have a sponsor for you today. This video is brought to you by SeatGeek. As it has been for a minute now, baseball is back. And that means you can get $20 off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code SRS. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. I've got it on my phone and it's far and away the easiest way to buy tickets. They make it really quick and easy by color coding all the deals available to you. Red is bad, green is good. Whether it's baseball, football, basketball, a concert, a festival, whatever, SeatGeek organizes all the tickets available online into one place for you. I used it to get seats for a Kanye West Don to 2 event in Miami. In the same building Bartolo Colon did this. No, I didn't see Kanye fling the mic. And yes, the audio was fine in person. If you want to see something live in front of your own two eyes, we got the hookup. Use code SRS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SRS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Back to the magic. We're gonna center this video around two main events. A guy going down in the books as pitching in a major league game but not actually throwing. Lucky for when editing this goes down, they're both in the era where footage for the game is pretty accessible. Actually, you know what? Creative challenge for the rest of today. Every visual bit from here on out in this video is going to be Steve Harvey related, and it'll still feel natural. July 7th, 2009. Denver, Colorado, United States, Earth, Milky Way Galaxy. The Washington Nationals have a runner on first with two outs in a tie game. A man who will soon begin calling himself Tony Plush and shooting imaginary arrows at cameras is up to bat. Only a couple months before he gets absolutely clotheslined in Miami. The Colorado Rockies bring in a new pitcher named Alan Embry to face him. Embry stands on the mound and just before throwing his first pitch, fires a pickoff to first base. The crowd clearly has no idea what's going on. They're all like, huh? After a very time-consuming rundown, the Rockies finally get the runner out. Top of the eighth inning ends. In accessible highlights that are slightly better quality, the Rockies rally in the bottom of the eighth to take the lead. They bring in a new pitcher who locks down a save, and the Rockies win. Because Alan Embry was the last guy to physically stand on the mound in the eighth inning before the Rockies got the lead, he got credited as the winning pitcher in the history books, without throwing one pitch. Alan Embry earns the win despite not even throwing a pitch. If you put like a bottle of soda on the mound, it threw as many pitches in the game as winning pitcher Alan Embry, completely exploiting the rules for how to be a winning pitcher. This is not the first time this has happened. BJ Ryan did it, some guy in 1970 might have done it, the newspapers couldn't decide on that. But Alan Embry's game is clearly here for you to see. The video lives on forever. So we're talking about this one. The next day, Embry would in fact throw a real pitch. Three of them in fact, striking out the only batter he'd face. I do want to make one thing clear. Embry did technically throw a baseball in the game where he didn't throw a pitch. You could argue he didn't even need to, but he did. So if you want to be that guy who doesn't count it, fine. He didn't throw a pitch and he got the win, so it deserves a mention here. But because he could have still achieved the same outcome by gently rolling the ball to an infielder, it does open up the possibility for me to talk about the time someone actually went down in the books as having pitched 
without even needing to touch the ball, let alone throw it. Alan Embry danced around the loophole. This next guy slammed his way through it. Meet Oliver Perez. Like Embry, he was a lefty reliever in his late 30s when he achieved strange baseball success. Spending a couple extra seconds introducing you to him because he will in fact get a lengthy video from me about his career in a few months. There. There's the official announcement of an Oliver Perez video. But back to how he pitched without throwing. Perez was pitching for a team now calling themselves the Cleveland Guardians. In a tight game against Oakland on June 29th, 2018, the plan was to bring him in to face a left-handed hitter, which is Perez's main strength. Problem was, Oakland pinch hit a right-handed hitter, a foodie by the name of Mark Canna, who also happens to play baseball. Because that was so not the plan for Perez to face Canna, the team was just like, yeah, no. They intentionally walked Canna, because there was an open base at first base and two outs, not liking their chances of Perez getting Canna out. Back in the day, you used to have to actually throw four pitches to intentionally walk someone. Now, you can just shoo the batter along to first base. That's what Cleveland did. Another right-handed hitter followed Canna, Chad Pinder. In 2018, there was also not yet the rule that said pitchers had to face a minimum of three batters, so Cleveland just yanked Perez out of the game to get a better matchup for the new righty. Oliver Perez didn't face Chad Pinder. He faced Mark Canna. He threw the same amount of pitches to both of them. And there's a smile on Ollie's face here. He gets it. You gotta love that. In the books, Oliver Perez walked Mark Canna. There's a walk on both their stat sheets. Forever. The at-bat is official and is set in stone as such. Perez did not actually throw a baseball in that at-bat. So while he left the mound, he became the first guy ever to appear as a pitcher in an MLB game and be credited for pitching without as much as officially throwing a baseball to any player on the field at all. If you want to claim that Alan Embry threw a ball to a first baseman so it doesn't count, what are you going to say about this? When you look at the box score for this game, Oliver Perez pitched. I'll repeat it again, he did not once throw a baseball with a batter standing in to face him. The craziest loophole, like maybe ever. Oliver Perez and I threw the same number of pitches that day. He pitched in a major league game and I didn't. Well, it worked out for Cleveland. Perez's replacement struck out the guy they didn't want him to face, ending the inning. All's well that ends well, I guess. Above all else, it's a great story, which is why you have this video, the pitcher who didn't pitch. It had to look so out of place. Like this photo of Steve Harvey in a Mariner's hat that I've spent like a year trying to truly decide if it's photoshopped or not. See, I told you I could do it. End of the video. Thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Have a good day. Fly torches to boost my credit. Murdered out tides, fulfill my credit.